Well, welcome everyone to Race Face Spotlight. Tonight we're going to be going out to Menlo Park, California with 14 year old Jesse Love. But before that, I'm telling you that we're recording here in Charlotte, North Carolina, actually in the Race Chaser Media Studios. So, Jesse, how are you doing? And welcome to Race Face Spotlight at the Race Chaser Media Studio. Thank you. I've been there a few times, had to do a few interviews, and it was really cool. So, uh, hopefully, you guys are enjoying it as much as I do. Yeah, we've been uh, we've been going through a lot of technical challenges here to get there, but but everything's good now. So let's get right into the interview. Um, you know, I, I'd really like to start off by talking about your 2018 season first. I mean, you the first thing that you kind of checked off the list was actually going in to defend your junior late model championship there at Madeira. Yeah, that was um, kind of a what I would call like a sophomore luck kind of season. Uh, you know, a lot of things that were out of our control went wrong uh, that kind of put us behind the eight ball. But, you know, it's such a great team behind me that we were able to prevail. Uh, you know, one of the things that happened was uh, we had a, a racing issue where we kind of pretty much, pretty much got dumped uh, one time uh, leading the race and we were really fast that day. Uh, and then uh, we had a clutch go out, which was something that, uh, um, was super hard to catch because it is, goes out like that and there's nothing you can really do about it until it happens. And then uh, other than that, we also ran the Pro Series in the final, I think, three or four races, uh, which, you know, was hard to go back and forth in two completely different uh, kinds of, you know, setup uh, and driving styles that go along with it. So uh, I'm thankful. I'm really thankful for my whole team that was able to uh, you know, keep pushing me and uh, putting enough uh, great support behind me to the, point, <clears throat> to the point where even after all these, um, you know, sophomore luck situations, we were able to win the championship. Well, I was out there for the championship race, you know, for the junior late model, and I know that you ran that pro late model race afterwards. And um, I mean, the, the determination that you had, and I, I think that was actually your first pro late model race that you that you ran. So, and you you came home, you podium. Uh, you podiumed that race. You came home in third. I think if there had been a few more laps left, you probably would have won that one as well and been able to try to check, cash that big check that they were handing out. Yeah, that was kind of a race where it was frustrating, really frustrating, because we were definitely the best car there, uh, or at least the top three for sure, probably the top. You know, I think we were, we were definitely a winning car. Um, it was a really long race. I had a lot of guys go out, a lot of guys, you know, fall back from, you know, wearing their stuff out. And I'm surprised that I didn't wear my stuff out, to be honest with you. I mean, uh, about lap probably 10 to 15, the two cars got loose and went up in the track. Uh, we pulled the pill for seven, so we started sevens, and we were working our way through the field. Two guys got loose, went up the track. And I had to go, I, had to, I didn't stop, but I had to really, really slow to make sure I fit through this little gap that was right against the wall in the car. Uh, unfortunately, they put us in the back for that, not maintaining caution speed. Um, so we went from, you know, almost centering the top three on lap 15 to having to start the rear, you know, 26 car field that started the main after the C, C main and B main. So um, it was kind of like, okay, we got to work it out for us now. Uh, but we were able to, you know, keep our heads down and keep pushing, and uh, we found ourselves, you know, in a restart, running third, and the leader just think at a very good, a very good jump, and then we'd be back in six, and then we'd be on the outside pole, come to the green, the bottom level would take off, and then we'd find ourselves back in, like, you know, 10th place again, and then we'd work ourselves, break ourselves back up. And it was just a race where you could move around so quickly, things changed so quickly and then the last 10, 15 laps, he saw a lot of guys that were really fast in the beginning. They started to slow down. Lap traffic became a huge factor of the race. Um, so overall, it was just a big learning uh, situation for me that I was really able to take a lot out of the race. Um, you know, we were really close to winning the race too. Yeah, we were working, it was kind of funny because I was the champion of the Junior Late Model Series and the guy I was racing for second was the champion of the Pro Late Model Series. So we were kind of dueling it out, trying to get the runner-up spot. But um, I knew that if I got by and we could get a yellow, you know, had a really good shot at winning the race. Oh, sorry. Had a really good shot at winning the race. Um, so it's unfortunate that uh, we couldn't uh, get by him. You know, it was only about five laps to go. But um, it was definitely a really cool race and probably one of the most fun races I've ever had. 
Um, so anywhere from the lap draft to working away through the field to the amount of stout competition, it was a really cool race. Yeah, I know. Being there and see you get out of the car, I mean, for the first, you know, two or three minutes, you were really upset. You were, you were, you wanted to win so bad. But I think later in the evening, as it kind of sunk in, what you had accomplished uh, was pretty cool. So let's now move into the open wheels, and and you know, we'll talk about the BCRA midgets. I mean, you had to get a uh, an age waiver to actually be able to run that series. And then you go out and you start knocking off wins after I think about the third or fourth race. And, and I mean, how satisfying is that to have to get an age waiver to be able to get in and then end up actually winning that championship? Yeah, I remember about a year or two ago, we were just thinking about running BCRA. My crew chief at the time, who I ran the midgets for, Trace Van Dyne, was like, oh, I know, you got to wait until you're 15. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so going in, asking for the, for the waiver was definitely kind of a, an if, you know. It was a situation where, yeah, we'd be, you know, really stoked and surprised um, if we were able to do it, but we wouldn't have been upset if we weren't able to because it was such a, you know, a crazy thing, thing to think of. You know, putting a 14-year-old midget, Sacks 15, B Story has always been 15, uh, Power Eyes, Power Eyes 14, but um, you know, a lot of series they're strict in the 15, 15 years old rule. So uh, it was super cool to finally, you know, get the call on the way home after the board meeting uh, that we were able to get the waiver. It was super cool. Um, and then to go on, or go on and be able to, you know, about the first, I remember about the first five races. We were struggling a little bit. I had a big learning curve to get over. You know, it's a lot stiffer competition from the speed two to this one, uh, to the full midget. So I knew that I had my work cut out for me. I had to keep improving. And eventually we found ourselves, you know, kept improving every weekend. And because of that, we were able to uh, find ourselves in a situation where we were fast enough and put a put together a you know, solid weekend to the point where we were winning races. And then we at one point we won three races in a row. And then uh, we probably could have won the fourth one too. We started fourth, and we were up to. So I think we were passing for the lead on the second lap. But no, in the first lap, coming off the four, um, that stopped, and we were really fast there. And unfortunately, we had a mad go out, uh, which uh, you know cost us uh, cost us potential win. Um, but I can't thank Trace Van Dyne enough. Uh, you know, we had I think call it 20 races or something like that, probably something like that on the calendar for the midget. And we only had one DNF, uh, which was super cool. Uh, it's not something that you, you know you see a lot. There's always you know, different things that can go wrong. So I can't thank for I can't thank Trace Van Dyne and uh, my whole team that really put a lot of pressure or not pressure, but a lot of work behind me that uh, eventually got us the championship. Yeah, and then and then of course you know we we get through the the junior light model championship, the BCR A midget championship, and then you go out to Vegas and you're you're going to tackle the INEX uh, Road Course World Championship. And, you know, you won that as well. I mean, so you got to look at 2018 and think that was a pretty stout year. Yeah, it was a what my dad calls Cinderella year. Um, you know, we went from, you know, winning the young, being the first driver to ever win a uh, major race at 14 years old, uh, defending the Junior Lane World Championship and winning multiple races. We won the BCRA championship. We finished, you know, we won the Yinex World uh, Champion on road course, which was something that was surprising to me because, you know, we haven't ran much road course, but I love road course so much. So it was pretty cool to do that. Um, and then our first pro late water race went out there in a really, really stiff field um, and finished third, which was, you know, I know it's not a win, but it was super cool because a lot of guys, you know, went out there and you know, they ran the whole season and they weren't able to get a top three or, you know, you know, even the top five was, it was really difficult to do. So to be able to, you know, run three pro late water races and, you know, finish third and then, you know, how to lead in the race and, um, you know, really having a fast car and a really good chance to win, uh, unfortunately having a brake failure. And then the next race, having a third again uh, from coming from 26 was a, a super cool, you know, thing that we were able to do. I can't like thank Cloud or going to do that. Um, it was super cool. So it was an awesome year, and hopefully this year will be as good as last year. Yeah, so let's let's move into 2019, and, and let's just start off by, 
Um, I think the, you know, you, you kind of knew that you were going to be a Toyota racing development driver, I think, really in 2018, but 2019, that was the official word came down. Uh, you, you got that. And then, of course, the big deal is, you know, getting signed with Keith Coons Motorsports to be able to race in the, in the Power Eye Midget Series. I mean, I, I know that was kind of like a dream come true to you. I know there are thousands and thousands of kids out there that are, that are racing sprint cars and midgets and stuff that would just give anything to, to actually get to, to run for Keith Coons. So, you know, how, how big a deal is that for you, actually? Well, I remember going out to dinner with my dad and my mom, and then I got the call. Uh, we were having sushi somewhere in the Roman City, and then I got a call from uh, from Tyler, uh, no, from Trent, who uh, knows someone that works at uh, TRD. He's really um, been a huge connection with me in TRD, who's helped me a lot. And I'm very thankful to have uh, you know somebody like him being able to you know pick me up the ladder and uh, you know keep you know let me be able to do what I want to do. And it's super cool to have a team and an organization like Toyota around you to do it. Uh, something that's super cool and I value a lot. Um, and then I got the call, uh, so I'd be driving for Keith. And I went from about, you know, 15 races, then I went to like 20, and I think now we're up to about 25 races with Keith. So I'm super thankful to be able to have that opportunity. We're not able to run the full schedule because I'm running the super late model tour uh, with Mike Nick and Nick Cloud Motorsports. Um, but I'm just, you know, you go on iRacing and stuff like that. You know, the midgets team is Keith Kings. You got, you know, you know, Chili Bowl lost what three or you know, I think it's four winners. Um, who are the best driver ever, Chris Rigal? You know, who drives uh, for Keith Kings and all that. So you know, to be able to drive for you know, the best midget team in the country um, is super cool, and I'm very thankful and humbled to be able to have this opportunity and hopefully, uh, you know, show them that I got what it takes. Yeah. So, do do you do you know exactly how many races that you've got on your schedule for 2019 right now? It started off at like 50, then it went to like 60, and now I think last time I checked, uh, I think it was at like 74 or something races. So it's a lot of years, a lot of races in one year. That, that's a lot of racing, and then you're throwing in some 360 and some 410 wing sprint car races uh, for Har Harley Van Dyke, and that's. Uh, I know that you've already had a couple of them, so what was it like getting in that big 410 wing sprint car to get out there on the dirt with that baby? Yeah, those cars are something, you know, whether it's a 360 or 410, you go out there and it just uh, makes your eyes big and, you know, <laughs> sits you back in your seat. And it took me a while. I mean, I'm a wingless guy uh, from where I started. And you go in the corner and you, know, you set it like a flag stand, you know. Uh, and in the sprint car, you set it at like, you know, you drive, you drive it into the corner, you know, and every track is a different learning curve. Every track has its own characteristics. I don't, you know, driving a wing car, you have to adapt to. Um, and it's a lot of, it's really technical in a wing car. Um, and it's something that's kind of, you know, weird how you, you know, you don't keep air in the wing, you just fly. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun the wing car. It's definitely been a big learning curve, but I'm really up for the challenge and I love doing it. Um, I definitely want to run more wing car races. Uh, I love Tulare a lot. Tulare was a cool place to drive in a wing car because uh, you just go in the corner. And it, you drive into the corner and then up on the fence and then just drive down the track. And in a wing car, it's, it's a sketchy thing to do, but it's a lot of fun. So uh, I'm super thankful to have the opportunity to run a wing car. Um, and hopefully we can keep uh, running more of those races. Yeah, and I heard you put a slide job on Rico, and then he kind of paid you back as he kind of flew by you and thought, try to follow him. Yeah, that was a heat race at uh, Stockton, my first time in a wing sprint car. And uh, <clears throat> I kind of got, you know, big head, and I was like, oh, I'm going to steal this thing in there. And we, I think we started fifth or something in the heat race, and I think Rico started fourth. And uh, they kind of got away because it was a crazy track. Um, so uh, I kind of just drove it in there, slid in, and then uh, he just kind of, I don't even know if he noticed me, he just went right by me again. And uh, I was like, oh, that's Rico. I mean, he just clearly, that guy is so, so good in the wing car that it's just cool to watch him race. And especially like Rico's been like, you know, one of the guys that you like, really look up to, and especially in. Uh, the wing car world and uh, sprint car and widget world too. Um, that when you know I was able to go out on the same track with them, it was something that was you know something that's super cool for me. 
Um, so I loved uh, racing with them for the you know the one corner I did, <laughs> but it was super cool, and uh, I can't wait to race with them more. Yeah. So uh, as you had said earlier, you've got some um, SRL Southwest uh, late model stuff that you're going to be running for Nate Clow. Are you looking forward to that? That's another step up. I mean, even from the junior lates to the pros, and now you're going into that division, and that's a that's a pretty stout group of drivers out there that compete on that on a on a weekly basis. Yeah, I'm having a lot of fun in that car uh, from the testing I've done. <clears throat> we test that Madeira in that car, and you know that thing has some power and it has some grip and it has some brakes, and I mean, it's something that's gonna be a lot of fun to race. And I can tell you that right now, and I'm gonna have a lot of fun throughout the season. All right, so is there anything else on your schedule that we don't know about? Um, well, we're running with uh, Madeira Ninja Series, which is going to be super cool. It's televised. Uh, it's sanctioned by VCRA and Power Eye. And I'm going to have a lot of fun in that. I'm going for Trace Van Dyne. We raced one of them uh, last weekend, uh, Madeira, and uh, ended up finishing second to, you know, one of the best pavement drivers I've ever seen, so. Um, drummer doll, you know, he just, he knows how to drive a midget really, really well. So, um, he, we're going to have our work out for us on that. Um, I'll be doing some K&N testing as well with Mike Nake. Uh, it's super cool to go through, you know, the junior late model program, the open, uh, or the pro late models, and then, you know, super late models and then K&N pro series. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, super thankful to have a car more sports behind throughout this whole, you know, transition through all these different cars. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun, and I can't wait to get in the car. Well, and then on top of all of this, you're throwing in a few legend car races here and there. I know that this last weekend that you took the legend car and went and tackled the road course at Sonoma. What was that like? Yeah, so basically a rundown of the whole weekend uh, pretty much was I ran and raced uh, at uh, Madeira in the prolate model, in the, or the prolate model in the midget, and we finished second, and both races, which is like, uh, you know, it really kind of puts a chip on your shoulder uh, to go out there and win tomorrow. So, well, we finished uh, second of those two races. That night, we drove down to Sonoma and uh, tagged the rear with the provisional for the AMA and then uh, just drove our way through the field and somehow came out on top. It was super cool. Um, it was a really cool experience. I'll be running there, and I hope you'll be testing there some more. Um, I've tested there once before, but I've never raced there before, especially in Legends car. So to kind of just go in there, you know, cold turkey, after a full weekend of a completely different, completely different discipline, was super cool. I mean, we just kind of showed up, tagged the rear, and we were somehow able to win. So um, I'm excited for what the rest of the season has to hold. Uh, can't wait to run, hopefully, some more road course series races. And, uh, yeah, I can't make RGR, uh, Trace Van Dyne, and Nate Clower enough to give me a great call all weekend. So I know that you, you talked about you did some testing at Sonoma. I think you did that in a Mustang. Um, so i got to ask you, which one was faster? Was it the Mustang that was faster when you tested at Sonoma, or was it the Legend car this last weekend? Yeah, the Legend car was definitely a little bit quicker. Uh, just kind of, you know, the sports car just had, had a little bit more, you know, down the line. You know, off the street, we definitely felt like you were going a little bit faster. But those Legends cars, they're so nimble and so small. And they got quite a bit of horsepower for such a small car. Um, and, you know, little tires uh, that you go to the corner and you're using every little bit of grip, every little bit of, you know, breaking point you can. Um, and it just made for a really fun racing. Um, but I love it so much. And you know, turn 10, you know, it's a fast quarter Legends car. It, you know, it takes a lot to kind of just build up to, you know, keep that thing pinned. So um, I'm definitely having a lot of fun in life this far, um, and I hopefully can run more road course races. Yeah. Well, Jesse, I want to thank you for being with us. I encourage everybody to go out and follow Jesse on Facebook, Instagram, his Twitter account. Um, you can catch and keep up to speed with what's going on with Jesse. Follow that um, unbelievable schedule that he's going to be running. You can check that out at jessieloveracing.com. So, Jesse, again, thanks for being with us. We wish you all the best of luck for 2019. And uh, we're going to be checking back with you here in just a couple of months. Awesome. Thank you so much, race fans. Hope to see you soon. Okay. Well, everybody, thanks for watching this episode of Race Face Spotlight. Make sure to catch us every Wednesday night for Race Face Spotlight. We normally run on Wednesday nights, so this one's going to probably air a little bit different time. So, again, thank you for being with us, and we'll be catching up with you real soon.